Hi, today I'm going to just make a little introduction to a video that I made with my friend Gabriel a bit uh, less than a year ago, 11 months ago almost to the date, uh, around the 13th, 14th of uh, April in 2018, uh, about two weeks before his uh, wedding when uh, I was one of his best men and I got to know him about two years before that when I was in Mexico for the first time with hypothermia and I stayed at his place for a couple of days before I made the concerts and um, to commemorate it a bit uh, I'm wearing a shirt for Under the Razors Fest, which I organized with my other friend I made that time, Christian from Black Hate, who I know also have a project with called the Race de la Noche. And uh, uh, about two months ago, uh, January 12th in 2019, we made a festival together where uh, he and his drummer and bassist learned my setlist of hypothermia which we performed and recorded live and it will be a special DVD and uh, CD release which will come up in a not too distant future uh, but back to the interview I made with Gabriel last year it uh, is uh, a deep dive into more about myself as an artist but it talks about uh, hypothermia and some projects which uh, I don't have too much to say about yet but I will in the future like uh, defunct uh, deceased Sheila or the active but very slowly moving horns emerging which I will definitely do a separate video about because I have a lot to say about this and uh, I don't want to be misrepresented in any way and uh, of course I'm talking about this platform a symphony to the void which I've been very active with in Mexico because it's been the banner for my art exhibitions which I've had several of there along with uh, uh, different uh, live performances where I've been painting in different uh, theaters and things like that and we're talking about uh, yeah, me as a painter, me as a musician about my youth and childhood and the whole journey from uh, when I started everything or before until what was active about a year ago which remains true until now but unfortunately I don't have a budget for a camera that's uh, more high-tech or made for actual videos so I'm shooting this from a regular system camera which has uh, video possibilities so it shuts off <laughs> and uh, yeah, after a couple of minutes sometimes and also my third extra battery reserved for the interview was unused, charged but didn't work so we had to shoot the last part of the interview on my phone which unfortunately is like this instead of this so <laughs> it looks a bit shitty in the end uh, but the sound is all right, lo-fi of course because yeah, that's how I do it. I, li I like lo-fi, and uh, I think if you're a fan or a follower of me, you shouldn't be too averse to it either. And I promised I will try to upgrade what I can, but please <laughs> have some consideration that the, it's the music and art that is the most important that I can create more music and more art especially more music and uh, 
it's more important that I can invest in a new microphone or amplifier or a piano than a camera. But if, if enough of you want also improved video quality, your support in any form is very very appreciated. But enough about that. I hope you enjoyed the interview and as always thank you for watching. Please subscribe and follow the links in the description and I look forward to talk to you more. Well, nowadays being called artist has lost a lot of significance. Maybe it has become cheaper or maybe as many people have named themselves as an artist. However, there are a few persons in the scene that could utterly fit in the description of artist. And Kirk Carlson is one of these. Musician and painter to be ambitious on purpose, he has developed the most dynamic, complex and sensual tunes along many years with different bands and even with some collaboration and guest appearance. Being active with a well-known and formerly dead life lover along with some painful pro providers of tunes as Kyla and Life is Pain. But now this Swedish artist has evolved and developed into a more sophisticated and ambitious creator. Not only musically with Cal, hypothermia or considered suicide, but now sharing and exalting his painting skills. Musically, Kim has been a record machine, a genius in this chaos, a multifaceted musician and composer that could emerge from the deepest nightmares and from the most beautiful landscapes. His musical works, which will be presented by himself in the following lines, have reached a new level of luminescence and darkness we all. As painter, Kim is not an orthodox artist. He has not followed any line or any particular technique. He has expressed emotions, his experiences, his thoughts through milk, wine, blood, coffee, and ashes to name a few. Each and single paint reflects an inner part of his mind. And now, the artist himself shall speak with him. Yes. So, uh, from within is uh, what's beyond. And uh, when it comes to my surroundings, that uh, inspires me most is the nature uh, that I'm always walking through every time that I'm going anywhere because I live like in a small village with around 300 people in the woods and I don't see other people I, uh, both, both by that design and by choice of course because I'm, uh, when I'm here and traveling like this month in Mexico I'm a social person but uh, I'm very introvert when I'm at home and this can take weeks or months without me speaking to anyone with sometimes very few exceptions most of my paintings at home. My house is pretty much a studio for music and uh, paintings and uh, uh, it's from my memories of different plants that mean something to me uh, and that I often infuse the wines or leaves with parts of those plants as well uh, to make the connection a bit stronger and deeper and that's why I try to paint uh, in an abstract way because I feel uh, that I'm uh, not skilled enough as a painter yet. I'm always practicing, but I'm not skilled enough yet to make a worthy uh, painting of uh, something so incredibly beautiful. So for me, I try to let the beholder find the beauty in what's, uh, what I create in the abstract uh, impression system. So the art, uh, has been a really important part of your life for many years. Absolutely, I've uh, painted most of my life. Uh, my mother is a painter, uh, so I was always encouraged when I was a child to be creative. And we lived in the outside of town, uh, a bigger town of course, like around 10 or 13,000 people. But we lived like in a neighborhood just outside the border of the town. Uh, with maybe 30-40 people in that neighborhood and uh, 
uh, it was maybe between two and three kilometers walking or by bike to school. And of course, I usually chose to go out in the forest that was behind where we lived instead because that, that's been my school. Uh, I took the books from school and from the library after I learned to read, and after that, I escaped the middle finger to the education system and uh, learned by myself everything that I know. Um, and yeah, that's, that's just how I like to do things in life. I, I take, I'd rather take the long road. Because uh, on that journey, that, that's where you find something true. So we can say that that little Kim Carlson in the early years found uh, in art all that attraction, all that passion that maybe you need for the time. What yeah, the connection between art and nature. That uh, uh, you know, when you go out, uh, like in something simple as a park or in an alley out here, like it's a fucking painting. You know, it's. Uh, it's not just something you're walking through. If you pay attention, you'll find different plants, and many of them that people don't even realize can be made into many different useful things. If you just go to a library or nowadays to the internet and just search that plant, and you can find a lot of interesting information about most things that are around us. So for the material you use at the paintings, a lot coffee, wine, milk, ashes. Yeah. It's a way to come back to that relationship with the nature. Yeah, because it's uh, those things are usually created from different uh, compounds that we we find from the soil. And uh, for me, the their smells create something special too. Uh, and. Uh, of course, it's also about, it's not just a choice like blood or milk, I don't choose that to be different or odd or whatever, it's uh, that they have actual uh, chemical reactions that uh, they are different depending on in what order you use the, for example, the wine or milk or blood, depending on which order you put them on the paper, they will have different chemical reactions because the acidity from wine or the fat that exists in blood or milk uh, creates shattered uh, and coagulated different patterns uh, and that creates uh, more depth into the paintings that I make so it can look like I've added like 10 or 20 layers when in fact maybe it's only 2 or 3 layers So, well, looking at your paint I can see many lines, many traces, yeah. without apparently any line, any... Yeah, I don't use brushes ever. Uh, it's, uh, I, uh, I, uh, in the past I used to use only like branches or different parts of uh, moss or uh, life and other plants. And the, the last year I've experimented a lot with uh, painting with my own hair. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, that creates very detailed and refined lines. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so... Thanks for having me here. My pleasure. Yeah. saying uh, uh, the last year I've been experimenting a lot uh, with uh, using my own hair for painting because it creates a very natural uh, details and lines and I found it's very great to replicate uh, like by different hand movements I create uh, very realistic uh, imprints of how different plants look uh, especially uh, one of my favorite plants that are around many old farms where I live is uh, the juniper plant which has a very harsh and uh, uh, rustic feel to it. Uh, it's uh, very, especially in winter, it's a real black metal plant. Like, uh, if you make it contrasted in black and white, it looks really rough and interesting. It's uh, necro as fuck. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, I really, that's why in many, like uh, the, one of the exhibitions I have now, uh, the uh, series called The Purple Violence, is uh, my attempt of uh, doing these juniper plants. And uh, uh, it's also like uh, uh, one uh, of the oldest used plants in Scandinavia uh, as a bitter even uh, herbal agent in beers, uh, like farmhouse beers for several hundred years back. Uh, because it wasn't always uh, accessible to have hops in beer, but you need something else to preserve it and add bitterness because if you only have ferment uh, the liquid uh, wort that you get from uh, grains, it becomes just very sweet. So you need something to balance that. So for me that's also an important connection because for me, uh, as a nature enthusiast, uh, the, the connection from the, the sacrifice that I cut a part of myself and use that to paint, uh, whether it's blood or my hair, uh, and to create something else uh, that's been used for hundreds of years in intoxication and elevation, creates a really powerful ritual and uh, it's something uh, that I've developed over the years uh, not only in art but in my uh, bands and of course not all uh, bands that I am in have uh, like the ritual as the main focus uh, but uh, it all starts from a ritual of some kind for me everything is a ritual but I don't demand that my uh, friends that I shared the bands with have the same attitude because it's important what they can bring to the band as well. But uh, it's uh, from my childhood and all those wanderings in the woods uh, instead of being in school that uh, really sparked the, the creation of my uh, uh, life project hypothermia. And as long as I exist, firm ever exist uh, because my, my goal is not uh, to just be uh, like uh, something legendary for me uh, anything that's not uh, eternal is a fucking mistake and a waste of time because what I do here doesn't matter but the things that I have created or that have been created through me uh, I believe that the albums that I have composed that are not recorded yet but will be are so powerful and uh, uh, have so much potential to alter people's uh, minds and uh, moods and many other things uh, that uh, it will be in the future you will uh, regard it as classical music because that's how I see black metal and uh, different uh, minimalistic and ritualistic forms of composing music that's classic music to me but just with different uh, instruments and uh, without hypothermia none of my other bands would exist uh, uh, the reason why I got in touch with my friend that I started Life Level with uh, it was uh, to record guest vocals on uh, an album, his second album with his solo project because uh, he was a big fan of hypothermia and he used to be uh, like one of my returning customers when I had a distribution record label uh, like 15 years ago and uh, it was a really special uh, kind of friendship we had uh, it can't be described really I've tried to in the past and uh, I'm going to in upcoming interviews about uh, Life Lover because uh, we're having the 10 year anniversary of the third album, Concourse. Uh, so we're, we have some great plans this year. Uh, nothing live, of course, because uh, we closed that chapter at the 10 year anniversary. That uh, was a promise from all the members that no matter what happened to any of us, when, it's ten, when the, our shared child is 10 years, something great will happen. And after that, it's truly that. And okay. uh, after that, uh, uh, 
and uh, also the friendship between the members that remained in Life Lover that are, is now Cal has become something really, really powerful. And uh, we're soon finished with our second album that I really, really look forward to sharing with the world that's coming out this year. When I'm coming back from Mexico to Sweden, uh, I will uh, just finish recording the vocals and anything else should be done while I'm here. So uh, it's going to be a really phenomenal thing to share because we have re-recorded it three times over the course of two years. Uh, you know, sometimes when you wait for an album by some band you like, you always think like, how, how can it take two or three years to make an album? It's, it, it only takes a couple of days to go into a studio and record it. But sometimes uh, there are things beyond your control. Just like the end of Life Lover, the, the conception of Cal has been <laughs> a very tumultuous. Very complex, yeah. I think. So, in that situation, hypothermia, I think it's like the way to put nature or something from, from you directly from yeah. you. Yeah, in the uh, yeah, exactly. world. Mm, so, yeah. so, same. But uh, it's nature in uh, music form or in the shape of sound. So I can see, for example, like Potermia, like Mother Earth, yeah. giving birth in some way to the other projects that you have been part of, like Lover, Cal, Kyla, etc. Yeah, or it's uh, like a tree, and uh, every different project is a branch on that tree. Okay, so now you have Hypothermia, and then something new appears between the music and you. Yes. Consider suicide. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, let's have a toast and we'll continue with that question in a minute. Yeah, it's uh, been a project uh, that uh, I've collected uh, sound for uh, with uh, different recorders uh, in nature for actually uh, consider suicide. Uh, seems new to people because it took many years for me to get started but uh, it's uh, been in the works for a whole decade actually it's uh, by the time that we started the recording with the life lover i had already started uh, collecting uh, sounds from walks and uh, different uh, field recordings and things like that that, that's why we also used field recordings and samples in Life Lover because I had equipment and we started getting interested in that and thought it would be an interesting way to add some chaos and depth to songs and they used to uh, uh, interrupt the structure of a song by adding something random uh, because it creates something and it's also seen in people's minds and they can't stop thinking about it and that's another way like besides having uh, like a great uh, hook or a hook chord on the guitar that when you hear an interesting weird sample it's in your head and you just think about that song and have to hear it again and um, uh, uh, it, uh, it's also something uh, like I'm very self-critical when it comes to recording music uh, and I've been becoming more critical each year. So that's another reason why it took so many years before I started to actually release anything with Consider Suicide, because uh, we had uh, uh, two different guitarists in Hypothermia, uh, from our first second guitarist until the, the present second guitarist we have now, which is the fourth one we have, which is Hans, who is a wonderful person. Uh, and uh, I had some other wonderful people before him as uh, guitarists, but the, their heart were, were just somewhere else. But the first second guitarist we had, which is uh, Johannes, is the one that has been helping me with all the recordings uh, up until uh, the most recent one, uh, Altida Lena, which was recorded with a friend in Belgium called Dea, who is another really wonderful person and a really, really talented producer, musician. And so is Johannes, and uh, he was a member of Hypothermia for many years, so he understands exactly the kind of uh, 
atmosphere I want. And then we share many thoughts on how to produce music and also our connection to nature and our roots in mysticism and pagan spirituality and our Viking ancestry and many other things. Because we are from the West Gothic part of Sweden, which is the most dense uh, uh, memorial site in the whole of Sweden. We have uh, over 70% of all the ancient ruins and graves of the whole country is in, in our little district. Uh, so we, essentially we, 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 we live upon a, a giant mass grave. And to wander through that and uh, hear different sounds through nature, it's impossible to not be inspired. And uh, I've taken that connection even deeper from hypothermia into consider suicide because all songs uh, are named after a person or a place that have uh, inspired me in some way. So now that I can appreciate all the background of your art, of your paintings, of your music, yeah. some questions come to me like, for example, the names of the projects. Yeah. Since hypothermia, life lover, or even consider suicide. Yeah. You define yourself as a nature lover. Yeah, and uh, an eccentric one at that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, when someone thinks about, for example, life lover, and you, you listen to the music yeah. and see the background, yeah, maybe yeah, it's a bit dark. Yes. Uh, we, we, all, we all appreciate dark humor. And uh, uh, the origin of the name uh, was actually that someone used that as an insult uh, to uh, one of our friends. Because uh, there are, my friend's other project was uh, more like devil worshipping satanic uh, music. And, uh, uh, in that kind of uh, subculture, uh, in the spiritual sense, there are many people that are very uh, purist about many things. And uh, they have a weird uh, ideal about what is true. And uh, they didn't think that my friends were real death worshippers or devil worshippers. So they said, yeah, you're just a fucking life lover. And uh, we thought, well, uh, that could be a bad name. Okay. Sh show that bastard. Because he uh, used to run a record label that failed miserably. And as a person, yeah. he's nothing today. Well, we created something legendary and we created a new genre of music. And we have inspired countless bands. Uh, and yeah, I can't even name them because there, there are so many, and, uh, but that's not the point. Uh, and that's not why we did it, but I can, uh, I would be lying if I said I wasn't proud. Okay, so that, that is for Life Lover. Honestly, yeah. before this, I thought that Life Lover was uh, like an ironic way. It became a bit ironic, of course, because the animal that will see us live or hear our records uh, will realize that we're not uh, that happy of people. We, we all have our issues. Like my friend didn't die of an overdose just for the fun of it. He was genuinely uh, depressed like, beyond belief. And for example, have you really considered suicide? Yeah, it was uh, uh, one of the things that I, there was very few days uh, in the first decade of hypothermia's existence that I didn't think about it daily. Uh, because now when you have a wonderful walk through nature, uh, uh, it can be hard sometimes to resist and uh, to not just find a nice uh, little uh, piece of nature and sit down and don't move. So. 
also we were talking about consider suicide. Yeah. And uh, uh, for me, uh, it's an important distinction to make uh, that uh, I never wanted to tell anyone what to do. I wanted to think for themselves and uh, base the, their actions and decisions uh, on uh, something uh, like not just knowledge uh, or wisdom, but something uh, deeper. And uh, for me, suicide is uh, the most uh, naturally empowering thing that you can do. But uh, you shouldn't just do it in vain or uh, take that uh, ability and possibility uh, for granted. It's something that you should think about. You should consider it. You should think about it a lot, because it's your life. It's not someone else's, it's yours. Your life doesn't belong to anyone else. And uh, it's important to think about it. You should think about death, you should think about suicide. And appreciate uh, what you have and the, the goals and ambitions that you have. If you don't have any, find something. So otherwise you're you're wasting time and time itself is worthless but what you do with it uh, that's uh, that can't be uh, valued uh, that can't be put value on uh, it's, uh, it's something infinite uh, and uh, uh, that's why I chose that name for the band that uh, it's something you should think about and uh, of course it uh, has a connection to uh, like ego death and uh, psychedelic uh, adventures and trips and things like that. So, uh, uh, it's another thing like uh, anyone shouldn't just take uh, mushrooms any day uh, without considering the implications that can have uh, on your being. But uh, I think if someone goes through life without experiencing that kind of uh, mind expanding and elevating experience that that creates, uh, yeah, you're not really being yourself to, uh, to your full potential because it puts a magnifying glass on everything that you do and everything that you think. And uh, from all my experiences, uh, I have evolved to a psychedelic being. I don't need to take mushrooms or LSD to see or think uh, in a psychedelic way. Uh, that's uh, been burnt into my mind and my spirit. And uh, it will remain until I'm gone. And uh, it will remain beyond me through my works. And uh, another reason why consider suicide is special for me is that it allows me to do things that uh, I would never do in hypothermia because that has a very specific goal. It's purely uh, an audio uh, sound representation of uh, the forest, while uh, consider suicide is the same but the opposite side of the coin. That, that's why the album, for example, here in the background, uh, not melancholy, uh, night melancholy, or nightly melancholy, is uh, creating these kinds of works have always been important to me because uh, over the years, you know, piano has always been my second instrument, but I have never really had the ability or possibility to uh, implement it in my other bands. And uh, I like minimalism, so uh, uh, when we finally found a good rehearsal space for uh, my other band Cal, uh, we shared with a really, really great, brilliant band of very talented musicians called Justa Bärnings Saga. And uh, uh, one, uh, their pianist uh, had been kind enough to allow me to borrow his uh, old Fender Rhodes piano sometimes 
and that's what this is recorded on. And it has a very genuine and melancholic atmosphere to it. It's, it has a kind of empty feeling to it. And uh, of course, uh, I love uh, experimenting with uh, different uh, effects and pedals. I collect countless of pedals uh, and uh, effect engines that you can do amazing things with. Um, and uh, on this album, it's a, it's a bit more basic. It's mostly a very short delay and a lot of reverb. While on the second part that I've recorded, that's going to be released later this year, uh, I'm uh, using some really wonderful pedals from uh, uh, Chase Bliss and uh, uh, Hologram uh, that uh, creates some stunning ambience. So I really look forward to sharing that with the world. And of course that will be the soundtrack uh, to my future live performances when I paint. Uh, yeah. So that's what I have planned for the rest of this year. So I thought I, I know about Kim Carlson, however, this, these lines, these words you have, you have shared with me in this place has been very, I don't know, outstanding in some way. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Uh, uh, I consider it like uh, just uh, how I described my music and my different project of being like a tree and with different branches. Uh, I am that tree and uh, all the different sides and perspectives that I have is like peeling away layers of that bark on the tree. So, or Kim, uh, different leaves. So Kim Carlson is a tree. Yeah. That have many branches. Yes. We have seen the branch of music. Yeah, and, uh, and, and to some extent you know my roots as well. Yes. And the branch of paintings. Yeah. Which is the follow, the follow, the new branch that Kim Carlson will show to the world in a future. Well, uh, with one of my other very talented friends, uh, Martin Strandberg. Uh, we uh, have started recording uh, some very abstract and strange videos. So, uh, one of the things that we're trying to incorporate more in the future, both in uh, hypothermia, consider suicide, and my uh, my collected name for my creativity, which is a symphony to the void, uh, which is both my account on Facebook and Instagram that anyone can follow to get constant updates about my works and where I have exhibitions, live paintings, and to some extent also concerts with my bands. And uh, I'm not just doing uh, traditional uh, albums and recordings, I'm doing soundtracks. Like in a few days, uh, I will attend a screening here in Mexico City at, uh, at a movie. Uh, one of my contacts has made here, and I made a soundtrack to this movie. Uh, so that's something that I'm doing as well now. Uh, and uh, that's my plan for this year and the future, to establish myself more as a sound shaper and show people uh, uh, like an ability to uh, take an abstract or less abstract video, something that I find interesting or pretty. Uh, or beautiful, or many other things, and uh, put uh, atmospheric and emotional uh, sounds to it, uh, from piano, guitar, or I have a collection of a lot of weird, strange instruments, and uh, me and my friend uh, Johannes uh, have some plans on building like our own instruments, effects, and uh, amplifiers, and all kinds of things, because he's not only an education sound engineer, but also an electrician. And having a friend like that is very useful. Yes, I can make it. Yeah. Because I could learn those things, but I, I'm saving a lot of time by having a friend that can do it for me. Okay. And so, he, he's building like some old traditional uh, Swedish, Swedish and uh, Scandinavian instruments that are like similar to violin but different. Uh, it has more of a detuned uh, and melancholic. Feel to it. So, um, 
uh, you know, band, like bands uh, Vardruna uh, that do uh, old traditional music, but both with new and old instruments. That's that's something that I look forward to experimenting more with. Sounds really nice, I think. Yeah, uh, for many years uh, I had a harp at my home, like a really big harp. And I have always dreamed about making something with that, so I think that's something that will happen this year as well. Some ideas went through my mind in this couple of minutes. Kim Carlson has been a very expressive artist yeah. in all the forms. Yeah. And prolific and very very productive. Totally, yes. Yeah. Very commercial machine, as I told yeah. before. But how could you describe who is Kim Carlson without using examples as your musical projects or without showing the paints you have done? Imagine that there is someone in front of you that have never listened to any of your bands, have never seen any of your paintings. How could you describe your art on words? I would like to consider myself to be uh, uh, the thing that uh, lies beyond the silence and emptiness within each of us. And I happen to be the, the vessel of uh, all that energy. Uh, and uh, it's uh, become uh, my destiny in this world to, to channel that emptiness and uh, teach people that uh, uh, emptiness and silence is something that you should embrace, you shouldn't fear it, you should welcome it, but on your own terms. Because when it's not on your own terms, then it can be a destructive force, which is of course grand by itself, but it's, it's not for everyone, and uh, of course it's inevitable. Uh, sooner or later everyone, usually at least, to my experience, uh, and my uh, meetings with people, it's inevitable to have the involuntary emptiness or uh, solitude in some time of your life. But if you don't, I would recommend it. Because uh, if you don't uh, spend some time with just yourself, yeah, you will never really know yourself. You will just be uh, uh, like a reflection and uh, the idea and concept of yourself that you have created to uh, appease others and well, maybe yourself as well because you might be in a social situation that can have uh, psychological or financial uh, uh, attributes to it that uh, makes it uh, impossible for you to be anything else than that person and of course you are that person, but uh, that's not really who you are. And uh, that's what I really adore about uh, creating different things. That uh, it allows me to not only show other people who or what I really am, but also teach them who they really are, because through my music and through my paintings people see something both within and beyond them, and uh, uh, that's, that's another thing that I could in some way say that I am, I am the gate and I am the key. But the life is a path, I think, in some way. Well, uh, I don't make a difference between life or death because th that's just different occurrences that happens throughout existence. And existence is both life and death. Good.